We're also checking into the safety of students after the recent Uvalde school shooting. Yesterday, several parents filed complaints for the district superintendent to be removed as the district continues to dodge questions about the deadly massacre in May. And tomorrow, the school board is set to meet regarding the firing of the district's police chief. 19 kids and two teachers were killed when a gunman went into the school and opened fire, which has schools around the nation working to prevent a similar attack. And we spoke with Columbia Police about the safety of our public schools. Heading back to the classroom, many different things may be running through parents' minds, but a big one is safety. And the safety concern for parents may be heightened this year, in part because of the recent Uvalde Elementary School shooting, which left 19 students and two teachers dead. In May, an 18-year-old legally purchased multiple AR-15 style rifles and bought over 2,000 rounds of ammunition. He then entered Uvalde Elementary School and fired over 100 rounds, killing 21 people. I don't know what else there is besides kids being slaughtered inside a classroom that could be more severe than that in our world. In the 77-page Uvalde report by the Texas House of Representatives Investigative Committee, the report outlined multiple failings of school door locks, school safety notifications, and even law enforcement. And I think the most shocking thing to all of us was that at one point there were so many police officers of so many different ranks and so many different organizations standing in that hallway, and nobody just said, I don't care what this person's saying, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the right thing. The report even states it is plausible that some victims could have survived if they had not had to wait 73 additional minutes for rescue. So you're trained to keep going towards the threat until the shooting is stopped. Assistant Chief of Columbia Police Jill Schlutte tells me they have access to all CPS stores and train for those types of situations. We've done it here. We've literally had people with fake blood. We've had students screaming. We've had tons of people coming out of the building yelling at us and telling us different things. That's time consuming and it takes a lot of people and a lot of time. As an added security measure, Schlutte says Battle High School currently has two school resource officers. What I would consider the Super Bowl for an SRO is, is that a, a kid there knows that another kid is going to do something in that school and we want someone there to feel comfortable enough to tell that SRO. Due to budget restraints and the pandemic, CPS hadn't had SROs since 2020. But back in March, Columbia City Council voted to put school resource officers back into Columbia Public Schools. Schlutte said one of the most common things they get notified about in schools is that someone hears about or sees someone with a gun. You know, I think it's really important that parents have conversations with their kids. You know, it's also important to have conversations now about what happens if you're out in public and something like this happens. Schlutte says in a lot of situations, people freeze, and that's the worst thing that you can do. Kids, obviously, a lot of ages, fighting is not an option, but a lot of them can run really fast. And so having these conversations, and unfortunately, it's like a lot of things in life now. We don't want to talk about them because they're scary and they're not fun. In the measure passed by Columbia City Council back in March, the plan was to eventually put an additional SRO in both Hickman High School and Rockbridge High School. Assistant Chief Schlutte tells me that the tentative plan is for those additional SROs to start this January. Megan Drakis, ABC 17 News.